Morning. I'm Casey. This is Keystone Curiosity, where we talk about all things unique to the state of Pennsylvania. Today's episode is going to be about Brandywine Battlefield. Welcome to Keystone Curiosity, where we explore the life, land, and culture of my beloved home state. Pennsylvania has something to offer everyone, and as living proof that the world is a beautiful place, you just need to take the time to find it. Located along the Brandywine Creek between Westchester and Chadsford, Brandywine Battlefield is the site of the largest battle of the American Revolution. In late August of 1777, 260 ships from the Royal Navy landed near modern-day Elkton, Maryland, on the northern end of the Chesapeake Bay. From them, 17,000 British troops disembarked less than 50 miles from Philadelphia. The expedition to capture the American capital was led by General Sir William Howe. Howe had had a distinguished career in the British Army, seeing action in Quebec during the French and Indian War, and had led the British to the successful capture of New York City one year prior. Upon learning of the British landing, the commander of the American forces, General George Washington, who had similarly seen action in the British Army during the French and Indian War, and had fought against Howe in the New York campaign, deployed his troops between Philadelphia and their landing site to defend the capital. A few skirmishes occurred on the British advance northward, leading Washington to eventually set up a defensive position on the east side of the Brandywine Creek at Chadsford. This position owes its importance to the fact that it was the most direct crossing of the creek on the road to Philadelphia. Washington, with more than 14,000 troops, had stationed over four divisions at the ford and had set guards on the crossings above and below Chadsford, confidently securing the area. The dawn of September 11th was wrought with fog, but at 5.30 a.m., British and Hessian troops under the command of Hessian General Wilhelm von Niefhausen began their march down Route 1 from their camp in Kennett Square. The 6,500-strong unit advanced on the American positions, encountering the Continental Light Infantry four miles west of the fort. Over the course of the morning, they would push the Americans back to the creek, taking heavy casualties as they did so. There they stood, staring at Washington's army in their defensive positions across the creek, and waited. The Americans who had prepared for this British attack realized that everything was going exactly to plan, until it wasn't. Unbeknownst to Washington, nearly 9,000 British troops under the command of Lord Charles Cornwallis crossed the Brandywine here at Jeffreys Ford, just southwest of modern-day Westchester. From there, they proceeded south towards the American line. Howe and Cornwallis had left Kennett Square before the Hessians began their advance. They had completed the 17-mile march in nine hours and showed up on the now-exposed American flank around 2 p.m. The Americans, who had been distracted by Neefhausen's advance and conflicting reports on Howe's troop movements, were slow to react. This allowed Cornwallis's troops a moment to rest. Washington sent General John Sullivan to take his division and two others under the commands of General Sterling and Stephen to address the British on their flank. They had just managed to position some of their men on the high ground near Birmingham Meeting House, a mile north of Chadsford, when Howe's attack began. The British Brigade of Guards caught Sullivan's left flank before his men had time to form, immediately sending them into disarray that caused the rout of the entire division. Sterling and Stephen, who had had a battery of artillery supporting their lines, held firm, at least for a while, before Stephen's right flank was overrun by Hessian Jaegers and British Light Infantry. Sterling's division held in the center for as long as they could, before they too were driven back as the British grenadiers charged with bayonets flashing. It was during this retreat that a Frenchman known as the Marquis de Lafayette made his first battlefield appearance of the American Revolution. Lafayette went to the 3rd Pennsylvania Brigade and attempted to rally the unit to face the British attack when he was shot. Despite this, Lafayette would spend the remainder of the day rallying what troops he could to have a more orderly retreat. Only then would he allow treatment for the wound in his leg. Back across the creek, Niefhausen could hear the fighting to the northeast. This was the moment that he had been waiting for, and began his attack across Chadsford. With his flank retreating and the assault across the ford, Washington's line broke. Desperate to save the Continental Army from annihilation, Washington ordered Nathaniel Green to attempt to hold off the British. Acting as a rear guard, Green combined his troops with the remnants of Sullivan's command to set up a defensive line just south of Dilworth. Here, they managed to stop the pursuing British for nearly an hour, allowing the rest of the army time to escape. When darkness fell, the British pursuit was brought to a standstill, giving the remaining Americans the chance to retreat and join the rest of the army in Chester. 
After 11 hours of fighting, the British had successfully defeated the Americans, inflicting nearly 1,300 casualties while taking less than 600 of their own. Despite this, Howe's lack of cavalry prevented him from pursuing and destroying the American army, thus allowing Washington and nearly 13,000 soldiers to live on and fight another day. The remainder of the Philadelphia campaign saw the two forces maneuvering around each other, with only a few encounters occurring as the Americans evacuated Philadelphia. The Continental Congress was forced to abandon the capital, relocating to York nearly 100 miles to the west. The military supplies in the city were moved to Reading to avoid falling into enemy hands, and 11 bells in Philadelphia were taken down and removed from the city to prevent from being melted down by the British for munitions. This included the State House Bell, which would one day become a symbol of Philadelphia under the new name of Liberty. Brandywine Battlefield was made a National Historic Landmark in 1961 and added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1966. Today, it is owned and operated by the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission. They maintain around 52 acres of the battlefield near Chadsford, which includes a visitor center on Route 1. They host tours and present multiple educational programs on publications that broaden the public understanding of the battle and its significance. Reenactments are held often that display both the battle and the living history of the era. They even hold a summer history camp where campers can experience the 18th century in a fun and safe environment. The Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission also partners with the American Battlefield Trust, who acquired an additional 10 acres for the preservation of the fields. The Trust has spent countless hours researching and cataloging the history of Brandywine and battlefields all across the United States, including the creation of the maps you've seen in this video. Both organizations operate off of charitable donations and focus their attentions on the preservation and education of the hollowed grounds of America's past. And sitting at an hour and a half from either Allentown or York, a visit to the battlefield is an ideal way to appreciate those efforts and to pay homage to those whose lives gave it its significance. That's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As per the usual, if you have any suggestions on where you'd like to see me go next, feel free to leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe so that you can receive notifications about anything else near Brandywine Battlefield or all across the state of Pennsylvania itself. But in the meantime, y'all have a good one.